technology uh, uh, facilitates persons with disabilities to cope with their impairment and facilitates them to live a life with dignity. Samarthanam believes in that and Samarthanam extensively ap applies technology in all the vertical, all the sectors to make the people's life easier. Uh, Samarthanam was started uh, in the year um, uh, um, 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 uh, 1997, February uh, uh, 26th, we have so many verticals. Number one, we have uh, 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 LRC. Skill development and livelihood options for persons with disabilities. As of now, we have trained more than 12,000 people with disabilities, and out of them, we have successfully placed 12,000 people with disabilities. And remaining uh, have been engaged in a small uh, business ventures. That's one uh, thing. Second, we have education program. We believe in that education is empowerment. Education empowers people with disabilities. We have education from primary to higher education. We have primary education. We have secondary education. We have higher education. We have uh, we provide all the facilities uh, for them. We provide them education, both in residential and uh, uh, daycare settings. And thirdly, we have women's empowerment program. Those women who come from very poor background and deserted, we try to um, rescue, uh, relieve, rehabilitate, and reintegrate them into the original communities so that they can live a life with dignity. And fourth vertical is we have a program called uh, Parisara, which is about uh, uh, the environment and uh, we have uh, uh, Victor sir. I'm sorry. Uh, there's a lot of background noise coming in uh, somewhere, sir. Uh, is that if we can? Uh, maybe my screen reading software. <laughs> uh, is someone uh, having a television running in the background? No, no, no. Okay. I have closed my door. It is uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure from where it is coming, but I was just hearing it back. I don't know. Yeah. It's my this is closed. Okay. <clears throat> and uh, uh, we have um, uh, the government of Karnataka has uh, given us some words to collect uh, the dry waste and uh, recycle it and uh, uh, clean, keep the clean environment and these things. And thirdly, we promote sports, arts, culture and um, uh, these things. We have a special wing called Sunada which promotes uh, arts, culture, All categories of persons with disabilities, plus on sports, arts, culture, sport, Victor, sir, we can't hear you now. Uh, your voice is very feeble. 
has a wing called Kunada. Kunada promotes uh, art, culture, and performing art. They promote um, art, culture, and performing art. Where people with different category of person with disabilities, so called uh, Indian classical music, Indian classical dance, and instrumental music in both national and international platforms. And they are performed more than 500 countries. And one of the unique features of uh, Samarthanam is that um, CABI, uh, Cricket Association for the Blind in India. We used to listen the cricket commentary on transistor uh, 15, 20 years ago. But now the blind people have been enjoying really playing the cricket cricket uh, on the ground. Uh, we have organized so many T20 uh, uh, matches, bilateral matches, uh, tri-series matches and all these things. And we have won so many uh, matches. So, and thirdly, um, ATA, um, um, assistive auxiliary uh, to technology. Uh, Samarthanam believes in promoting technology, uh, especially assistive technology for persons with disabilities. Technology is okay. Technology is there, but if it is not accessible to persons with disabilities, that there is no point in uh, uh, making persons with disabilities to make use of that. But Samarthanam is making a conscious attempt to make uh, that with uh, developing assistive technology to make persons with disabilities to use that. These are some of our uh, important uh, uh, verticals and important uh, programs. Uh, Vikas can add. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Th thank you, Victor, sir. Uh, I think you've covered uh, most of the verticals uh, on which uh, Samathanam works on. Uh, yeah, just to add quickly, I think we are uh, we are already taking up some time. I think we would need some time for the product uh, presentation and. Uh, a continual engine to present. So uh, yeah, we are uh, 24 this year and we are uh, having seven verticals as Victor sir said. Uh, we focus on all the major uh, programs like education, skilling, uh, sports, culture, uh, waste management, which is environment related. related. Uh, yeah, and we also work on rehabilitation of women as you were telling. Yes, and uh, we are uh, our constant endeavor is to get associated with uh, uh, you know technology companies or startups like continual engine uh, who are working towards building a better accessibility for the visually challenged uh, and uh, without taking much time further i would now like to hand it over to uh, the uh, continual engine team of uh, deepika and Mausumi. Uh, to take this forward and present the product uh, expo. Thank you so much for the time. Thank you, Vikas. Uh, I'll hand it over to Mausmi Shah in a minute. Uh, please feel free to pop any questions you may have in the chat box and we'll revert back to you. Thank you, Mausmi. Uh, thanks, Deepika. And uh, thank you, Vikas and Victor. Uh, thanks uh, to Samarthanam for organizing this and getting people on board. Uh, uh, we are... Uh, uh, we feel uh, privileged to uh, present our products and solutions uh, to uh, this um, lead group. And uh, with that, uh, uh, let's start the presentation. So uh, our startup's name is Continual Engine. Uh, who are we? Uh, uh, we are a technology startup and uh, we're building products for the global market. 
so uh, we're leveraging AI and uh, workflow automation to make accessibility uh, simpler, faster, and cheaper. Uh, it's been founded by uh, me uh, three years back. Uh, and I uh, myself am a technologist with degrees in electrical engineering and computer science and having a couple of decades of experience working uh, with uh, startups and uh, uh, corporates and building uh, products on a global level. Um, we have an engineering and product team of around 30 and an advisory board uh, comprising of global CEOs and CXOs. Uh, Continual Engine is incorporated in Texas uh, and the tech team is, uh, is uh, mostly based out of Bangalore. Um, so over the last uh, three years, uh, we have built a suite of uh, AI enabled accessibility and learning products. And uh, uh, the products are um, uh, basically, uh, you can call them uh, as three different streams of products. Uh, the first is an auto alt text authoring uh, uh, tool and platform called Continual uh, Vision. The second is a PDF remediation platform, uh, which is called Prep. And the third is a, a learning uh, platform, uh, which we call My Athena. So I will give you a very brief overview of each one of these products. And then uh, uh, we have product owners for each one of the three products who are going to give a detailed demo of uh, these uh, products and platforms. So, so uh, firstly, uh, we'll start off with continual uh, vision. So what is uh, continual vision? It's an AI powered engine, uh, which auto authors high quality alternative text. And uh, over the uh, past uh, few years, we have developed, developed a deep expertise in a wide range of disciplines, including organic chemistry, physics, math equations, math graphs, uh, engineering, uh, electrical engineering, civil engineering, mechanical engineering, computer science, accounting, and all sorts of tabular images. So our AI engine has been trained on hundreds of thousands of images and it extracts the important features from all these images and then stitches it together to, uh, uh, to form a coherent alt text description. So Continual Vision's alt text uh, authoring platform is fully compliant with section 508 and WCAG uh, accessibility guidelines. And with, our, with the use of our AI technology, um, the task of writing complex alt text for complex figures becomes very easy and uh, fast and cheap. Um, so with that, uh, move on to uh, showing some uh, examples of the kind of images that our engine can process. So here you can see uh, screenshots uh, of uh, chemistry images and the alt text that has been uh, generated by our engine. Again, uh, when the product owner shows you the demo, then you will get to uh, hear these alt text descriptions as well. Uh, then you see math graphs, which again has been handled by our engine and the alt text uh, description has been generated and complex tables. The next product that uh, I'd uh, uh, like to give you an overview of is called PREP, which is an acronym for PDF remediation platform. Uh, this, uh, this is a revolutionary AI based PDF remediation platform, which uh, makes the process of remediating a uh, complex and uh, uh, the entire complex remediation process uh, of PDFs faster, easier, and cheaper. So the way it works is uh, the AI tool uh, figures out what the uh, initial, uh, what the tags are going to be uh, for, the, um, for the document. And then it offers a a very intuitive UI for the user to look at these tags and, uh, uh, and uh, modify them or correct them as is necessary. And uh, we have uh, innovative tools and algorithms 
which make the process of tagging complex tables, forms, nested lists, and TOCs very, very easy. And again, that's a demo which you will see uh, our product owner give to you. Um, and uh, we can, you can effortlessly add all text uh, to images. Prep has been integrated with our continual vision engine so that uh, uh, some of these alt texts are auto-generated. And um, also PrEP can um, handle OCR, uh, can handle scanned PDFs uh, by performing OCR on them. Uh, and again, establishes a logical reading order, which can be readily reviewed and edited. Uh, PrEP comes with a versatile accessibility checker which provides an in-depth accessibility report, making it easy to flag issues. Uh, then we move on to My Athena, uh, which is our digital platform for um, uh, all uh, the company or uh, educational institutions learning uh, needs. So in this platform, you can access both internal courses that has been developed by the organization and external courses that uh, you, uh, that are present out there in the internet. Uh, then we have AI enabled personalized learning paths for the employees. Um, and uh, it's easy uh, to uh, share feedback on these courses and uh, very easy to integrate My Athena uh, with uh, HR systems, uh, with payroll systems. Uh, there are no expensive upfront course license fees. And uh, also My Athena provides a very interesting tool which uh, uh, performs the skill of, uh, profiling of the entire organization. And again, you will see a demo of this as well as we proceed along this session. So we have received, uh, we have worked with uh, the top global publishers and top universities uh, all over the world. And we have received glowing client testimonials um, so uh, testimonial for continual vision, uh, yeah, it's something like this. Continual engine has been a game changer when it comes to creating high level alternative text for our STEM courseware. For my Athena, a client testimonial is we have been uh, impressed by the simplicity of the product, versatility of use and responsiveness of the team. Uh, the product has been used extensively by our tech, product, compliance, and design teams. Prep, for prep, um, uh, with people saying, prep turned the daunting task of PDF remediation into a quick and painless one, saving me hours of frustration. Thank you, Continual Engine. So in terms of our engagement model, you can license our products or you can use us for services. Uh, so if you have any further questions, you can email us at contact at continualengine.com. With this, uh, I um, hand it over to uh, Rajat, who is our product owner for Continual Vision. Um, and uh, Rajat, uh, please give a brief introduction of yourself and uh, again, and start uh, with the demo. Thanks. Sure. Thanks, Mausmi. Hello everyone, uh, my name is Rajat Prakash. I'm the product owner for Continual Vision that is Invicta set of APIs and platform. And I have been managing APIs and platform uh, with the inception of Continual Engine for last uh, one year uh, post my joining. Okay, so uh, as Mosby said earlier, we have you know su suite of APIs which processes stem uh, images and uh, generates all text just by uh, an API call. So we have built machine learning algorithms which helps us do that. So I'll give a quick demo of how efficient and how you know what are the complex sort of images that our APIs can process. So for that, I'll start with our accounting based tabular uh, data uh, processing APIs. The, the screen that is uh, the, the UI or the tool that is on the screen is basically what we have designed in which user can upload the image that is particularly in a PNG or a JPEG form. 
and can select the type of image that the user is processing in terms of the STEM courses, whether it is a chemistry or a tabular data or a mathematics, and then subdivisions into each of this particular um, 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 uh, verticals, and then probably what sort of output you need to expect from the APIs. For example, let's say uh, on my screen currently are two tabular images, and our APIs are trained to give uh, outputs in form of XLSX, HTML and alternative text. So I have selected all the all these three outputs and I'll click on generate. Yeah, so our APIs were able to process both the tabular image very efficiently. So on my screen is a tabular image that is a balance sheet. And this particular balance sheet has headers and subheaders. And also the subheaders are divided into further subheaders. Let's say text source balance sheet is something that we can name as the title of the sheet or the header of the sheet. Then we have December 31 and changes increase and decrease as subheaders. And then to December 31, there are further two subheaders that is 20Y7 and 20Y6. So this nuances of how the headers are splitted among themselves and how the you know co column strategy has been there into the image is, is, is been taken care of. Now, next thing, if you see assets, assets is something that, you know, that, that is, that is spanned across the column. That spanning is also taken care by the uh, APIs. Now, uh, if, if now this particular table contains, you know, do, uh, dollar and commas and all those nuances that a, that a balance sheet table in terms of uh, numerical values would contain. So all those things are taken care of by our APIs and it's, you know, uh, gives a perfect representation of how well our APIs were able to understand or extract the features from the images and represent it in an accessible form that is on my screen currently is an HTML form. Also the underlines and all those things are taken care of. So once this particular HTML gives an exact representation of how, how well we were able to process the image, and further to that, we have an alternative text that reads this particular image uh, in, in, in a tabular fashion from top to bottom and left to right. The second image uh, is, is a similar tabular data, which is probably a, a you know, form of a ledger, a worksheet. And a worksheet or a ledger has its own nuances in terms of the columns those are present. So let's say the last column of uh, the, the last, I can say the last sub column of a, of a header has double digits, where, whereas, you know, the, the initial columns have either single digit or double digit. To understand the, the positioning of those particular numerical value, whether it belongs to a decimal place or it belongs to a tens, ones or hundred place, all those nuances are being handled by our, our APIs very fluidly and very efficiently. Next, I'll uh, move to MathVision. So uh, MathVision uh, very efficiently processes various types of graphs. You may name it bar graph or line graphs. Now uh, on my screen is, a, is an image with, which contains bar, bar graphs and probably I'll use a screen reader just to explain how well our APIs are able to understand the x-axis, y-axis, the, the naming convention that is used in this particular a bar graph and how the axes are split into various points. So I'll probably I'll select a few line of description to illustrate how we are generating all text for this. A vertical bar graph is drawn on a coordinate plane. The horizontal axis is labeled time period. There are eight markings on the horizontal axis. They are 6A, 9A, 9A, 12P, 12P, 6P, 6P, 9P, 9P, 12A, 12A, 3A, and 3A, 6A. The vertical axis is labeled percent of robberies. There are five markings on the vertical axis. Yeah, sim uh, so similarly, you know, as, as, the, as the, the screen reader read about the horizontal axis, similar such information are also extracted for the vertical axis. And then how, what are the information given by per, per bar on this particular image? Let's say 6A, 9A is points to 4. So all those descriptions are taken care of. Next is an image that contains a line graph and a parabola. I'll also read, a I'll use screen reader to read 
the part of the description so that you have you get an understanding how we are trying to illustrate this image maybe i'll read half of it the y axis ranges from negative 1 to 14 with the increment of 1 unit the parabola opens upward and has its vertex in the first quadrant at the approximate point 3 4 y intercept of the parabola lies at the approximate point 0 13.5 Equation of the parabola is given as y equals 1.0x squared minus 5.8x plus 12.7. The line enters the viewing window in the second quadrant, goes down and to the right, and exits the viewing window in the fourth quadrant. Yes, so where we here we try to extract that okay, there are two two information in this particular graph. There that is there is a line graph and there is a parabolic graph. And then what are the intersection points of this, this both of this graph? How how uh, both the graphs are situated in this particular graph in terms of the axis and what are their their coordinates? So we try to get all this information, then articulate in a fashion that is very easy for a, for a person to understand what the image is trying to say. Next, I'll um, move into Cambridge and APIs. Uh, now in in chemistry we uh, we uh, are able to process uh, various sort of images both in organic chemistry and in inorganic chemistries whether it can be a plain chemical molecule a chemical structure or uh, a, a chemical image that has you know um, equation into it which has a separate set of reactants and separate set of products and this in itself in can be a homogeneous heterogeneous image structure in which there is a cyclic form that is represented by a line structure there is a molecular form that is represented by a plain text and then uh, you know sim similarities in in, in the uh, product form so on on my screen is a very simple uh, structure of a uh, of a chemical image which has both text and the bonds represented by lines and the lone pair. So it's, it's a small molecule. I'll just try to read this. The figure illustrates a carbon chain with the following structure. H, single bond. CH2, single bond. CH, single bond. BR, this BR has three lone pairs of electrons. The second C atom is single bonded to CH3. Yeah, moving to next. Uh, now uh, on my screen is, as I was seeking, is a heterogeneous uh, uh, chemical uh, chemical equation, which is heterogeneous in nature in terms of its in individual image that has that it it, it contains. So uh, the first image is probably a you know a, a cyclic ring in form of a line. Second is a plain text, and so is the product. Then I'll again use a screen reader to read this out. The figure illustrates a chemical reaction containing two reactants and one product. The first reactant, a benzene ring in a vertical orientation with the three alternating double bonds between C1 and C2, C3 and C4, and C5 and C6. C1 is single bonded to CH3. C4 is single bonded to NO2. The second reactant is HNO3. The reaction takes place in presence of H subscript 2. So subscript for the product, a benzene ring in a vertical orientation with the three alternating double bonds between C1 and C2, C3 and C4, and C5 and C6. C1 is single bonded to CH3. C2 is single bonded to NO2. C4 is single bonded to NO2. There is a callout states both the methyl and nitro substituents direct the incoming substituent to these positions. Yeah, so as I said, we were very, uh, you know, very fully able to understand what the image is trying to say and articulate it very well so that can be very easily consumed by the end users. I'll move to next set of vision APIs that is uh, in, in the engineering domain and that is um, circuit diagrams. So here in circuit diagrams, we try to understand what are the different, uh, uh, you know, elements that is present in the circuit and how they are uh, connected to each other. To explain this, I'll probably read first of the, of the description that, that will give you a brief idea how well we are able to identify the elements and see how they are connected to represent a circuit. The circuit contains a total of seven elements. The elements present in the circuit are one inductor which is labeled as L subscript 1, 
three resistors which are labeled as R subscript 1, R subscript 3, R subscript 2, two capacitors which are labeled as C subscript 2, C subscript 1, one source which is labeled as V subscript 1, T, one end of the component V subscript 1, T, is connected to R subscript 2. Similarly, the rest of the connection, how the other components are connected uh, to represent the circuits is described in, in rest part of the descriptions. Okay, on next uh, Vision API set is the uh, block diagram. So block diagrams in terms of description is very similar to the circuit diagrams, how they are connected. Here, instead, in, in circuit diagrams, we identify the circuit components like resistors, inductors, and you know voltage suppliers. Here, we try to identify the summing points, the, the block diagrams, the, the, the name that the block diagram contains. Here, it is controller and how uh, the flow is there. Uh, in, in circuit diagram, we had, you know, we, we don't have a sequence that we need to follow in terms of direction. But in block diagrams, we do have arrows and uh, the, the direction information is there, we would, which we would need to identify and explain it likewise. Next. Next on my screen is a is a graph image. Now again, there are two types of graphs that and you know we there there are multiple sort of graphs that we need to process. But uh, basically, we have divided into two parts. One is mathematical graphs, and one are engineering graphs. Engineering graphs, basically physics graphs. Now mathematical graphs are something that relates to how the how the elements inside the graph that may be a line, a parabola, or a bars or or or, or some bars are placed with respect to the x-axis and y-axis and what what is it trying to represent. But the graph which is on my screen is more of a physics graph, an engineering form of a graph. In this, instead of saying its relation with the axis, we try to extract the uh, trace of the curve. Or the trace of the graph how where from where does the graph starts what is the trajectory it takes and finally where it ends I'll, I'll again use a screen reader to describe how does it sound the graph is drawn on a coordinate plane the horizontal axis is labeled x and has markings x subscript 2 x subscript 3 and x subscript 4 the vertical axis is labeled energy the curve starts from a point closer to upper end of positive vertical axis and decreases as x increases. The curve dips until a point that corresponds to x subscript 2 on the horizontal axis. The curve rises to a peak until a point that corresponds to x subscript 3 on the horizontal axis. The curve forms another but larger dip and intersects the horizontal axis at x subscript 4, 0. The curve then increases as x increases. Yeah, so we are able to also follow the trajectory of the curve and give the relevant information. Okay, now next uh, on my screen is uh, again a physics image that we call at uh, we, we call as vectors. So given any vector diagram, we are, we have the APIs which will try to identify how the vectors are positioned and uh, try to describe uh, in the the vectors in the given image. Here here we can see there are two vectors. So it says the central point has two emerging. Uh, arrows from it and then the uh, what are the label on the vectors that is a vector and b vector next uh, we'll move to computer science now computer science have multiple sort of images uh, be it a browser image or or uh, you know maybe any id image or a terminal image and uh, maybe the image may contain some algorithms so here in this particular um, uh, the, the image on my screen is a web browser image which has multiple parts like headers navigation bar then some bullet points then again you know some uh, headers and then and then again some headers some images and some paragraphs so basically when we even when we study uh, you know how to create a browser so, so the thing is that we try to extract or create browser in terms of division so so if uh, you know uh, the the first part of the browser is a division which contains a, a, a separate header next is a navigation bar which contains different tabs and then again you know there are two divisions which contain certain information and then again a header and then three divisions which contain certain information. So we try to break down the entire picture of the browser on how the browser is structured so that trying to visualize becomes easier for the end person. So I'll, I'll, I'll um, uh, again read a part of it to help you understand how briefly we describe this sort of images. A browser window titled Senior Moments is shown. The browser contains some structured text content and free image content. The content starts with two div elements placed side by side. Div 1, 
A level 1 heading. Senior moments. Div 2. A level 2 heading. 55 is the new 30. Next is a horizontal navigation bar with the following tabs. Home travel discounts, healthcare, Medicare contact. Yeah, and so and so on. It goes on describing how the rest of the content in terms of text and image is positioned in the given uh, browser image. Next is also a browser image, but here uh, the difference is that uh, instead of just being plain text and image, it contains information in terms of form. So Arabia is a very intelligently able to understand okay, okay, this particular web browser contains uh, form content and then it tries to describe uh, the content in terms of it, its own technicalities, whether it is a text box or it is a text area and you know what are the fields that is it is related to. I'll again uh, you know, read, up, read part of the description so that you will understand how well we are able to extract this information. Next is the form content. The content top to bottom are as follows. Asterisk first name colon and a text box. The text box contains Sparky as value. Asterisk last name colon and a text box. The text box contains Felk as value. Phone colon and a text box. Yeah, so it, it, it is able to understand from where the form content is starting and what's the name of the form, what's the type of the box that is present and what is the value that is, you know, uh, there in the form content. So it's able to distinguish all these features and uh, uh, articulate it well. Okay, next in the computer science is something uh, image of, a, of, an, of an algorithm. Now, uh, in a, though algorithm appears to be a pretty straightforward text, but uh, what important here is to understand the very key terminologies of symbols like hash or an open angle bracket or a close angle bracket. Apart from that also how the code is intended. Now for something like you know Java or C indentation doesn't matter a lot, but if, if that particular is a representation of a Python code, then it then the indentation matters a lot. So I'll again use a, a screen reader to read part of the description. Line one at indentation level zero. Hash include open angle brackets do dot h close angle bracket. Line two at indentation level zero. Int mirror curse open bracket into comma int b close bracket open curly braces. Line three at indentation level one. Return open bracket b equals equals one question mark a colon mirror curse open bracket a comma b dash one close bracket plus a close bracket semicolon. Line four at indentation level zero. Main open bracket close bracket open curly braces. Yeah, so apart from, you know, identifying the special symbols and reading the reading the code, it's very well tried to identify it with what particular indentation the line begins. And that is very vital to understand any code in terms of structure of the code. So that was from uh, Vision Suite of APIs. And uh, uh, probably ask me if you like to add anything else to it. Rajat, there's a question uh, in the chat okay. box. Can the software indicate in real time where the cursor is so the end user can enter the data? Uh, so probably uh, what I was uh, reading here is uh, it was through a screen reader. Probably if we use some screen reader software, then uh, we could get to know at which, which particular position uh, the text is. In terms of uh, uh, mapping the text content to image content in terms of positioning, uh, we are yet to reach there and it, it is something which is in our pipeline. Is there any further questions? All right, I think we can move on. If there are any, we can take it uh, at the end of the webinar. All right, thank you. Thank you, Rajat. I think next we have Prep, uh, Siddharth. Do you wanna introduce and take it, introduce yourself and take it forward? Yeah, thank you, Ritika. Thank you. Yeah, uh, so hi everyone. So uh, this is Siddharth, I work as a product owner for Prep. I'll be taking you to the demo for our PDF remediation platform. 
uh, PrEP helps to remediate PDF documents quickly and uh, efficiently. How PrEP works, it's a cloud-based remediation solution, which can which you can upload any PDF document and you uh, get output as a remediated uh, PDF file for the same. So now uh, let me share my screen and give you a demo of the product. So once, uh, so this is the PrEP platform. Uh, when you log into PrEP, uh, you get this screen. So uh, basically if I start from scratch, you get this login screen whenever you open the platform. Uh, everyone has a unique username and password through which they can log into the platform. It's a cloud-based solution, so you don't need to install any software on your machine. It works directly from the browser. When you open this, you get the screen where you can see the number of PDF documents you've uploaded, the number of files that has been exported, and all the PDF files that the user has been working on. Once uh, the user decides which file to remediate, uh, they can click on the upload button and uh, they can upload the file. So for our demo purpose, I've taken a file which kind of showcases all the major aspects of PrEP. Uh, if you have any other specific questions, I'll try to answer that with this file or if any other file is required, I'll try to take that and answer your question. So when I upload a document to PrEP, what PrEP does is it tries to uh, detect all the tags inside the document along with a tag type and a reading order. When it detects a tag, it creates a square rectangle around the tag uh, in the left corner, it displays the tag type, and in the right corner, it displays the reading order. So when uh, the user who is remediating this thinks that he needs to, he or she needs to change the reading order, they can change the reading order by moving the tag up and down uh, in the tree pane, or uh, in the canvas, they can change the tag type by selecting the tag. So these are the simple controls available to the users when they start remediating a PDF inside PrEP. When a user uploads this document, first uh, it's, uh, so because the tool is a little visual in nature, so the user needs to take some initial judgments on whether the initial detection uh, of the tags is granular enough. If not, the user can change the sensitivity of the document using the sensitivity feature and can preview uh, all the different levels of sensitivity of these documents. So for example, if the headings and the paragraphs are grouped together into a paragraph, the sensitivity feature will break them into separate entities like this. So once that is done, uh, the user can actually figure out what is a particular tag type and change the tag type of the individual tags. So here the user can change the tag types by selecting the tag going to the tag type pane and selecting the appropriate tag for that particular content. So that, this process, because PrEP is designed around accessibility in mind, so all the workflows revolve around that. So by default, the user can, who is remediating this can associate all the content with the tags directly from the canvas as well as the tree pane. The user can even select multiple tags and change the tag type for them in one go. So here I selected multiple tags. How you do that is you select a tag, then press the shift key on your keyboard and select as many tabs as you want. And then you can change the tag types. So these are the some simple aspects of PrEP. So the key features web PrEP at Excel uh, and do a tremendous job as compared to any other PDF remediation tools out there are its list and table detect feature. So the, for the list detection, what PrEP does it automatically tries to identify the list type, whether it's a numbered list or a bulleted list and create the list tag in just one click. How we do that is we select the tag, which is supposed to be a list and click on list split. When, when we do that, what happens is PrEP automatically detects the list label and the list body and creates the entire list tag in one click. This process would typically take five to 10 minutes in any other tool, but with PrEP, this is a one click job. Uh, for a larger document, the more complex the list, more, more complex the tables, the time to remediate increases drastically. So PrEP can help to save a lot of time in more complex documents. So there's another bulleted list. I'll do the same thing for this. And once I click on that, uh, it creates the entire list tag with all the list label and list bodies. Uh, the same thing is also uh, visible on the canvas as well as the tree pane. So once that, that is done, I'll move on to the next page here. This has some headings and lists. 
Now the next page would have some uh, mathematical formulas, a nested list, and some complex tables over there. So similarly, I'll start with this tag here. This uh, is a nested list. Uh, it's a three-level nested list. It means there are items which are spanning across three levels. So prep also supports nested list and is able to detect all this content in just one click. So this list itself would have taken close to 15, 20 minutes to tag, but we are able to do that in just one click using prep. Now for some slightly different uh, tag types. So uh, we have a simple table uh, with sim simple column data where uh, there are four columns uh, with data in each column and the first row is the header row. I'll take this uh tag and click on our detect table feature so what that detect table feature does is it automatically detects the table header content and the table data content and automatically creates the entire table tag which is needed for a screen reader to read this table so it, it did the entire table in just one click now if you look at this more complex table uh it has some uh, column spans. So it has some merge cells which are spanning across multiple columns. So what I'll do is I'll again do the same thing. I'll select the tag and click on detect table. So this is internally using our own table vision API, uh, which is powering this tool. Uh, so which is able to detect all the table content and create the table tag in just one click, which is needed for PDF uh, documents. Uh, here, uh, if it's a merge cell, uh, it automatically highlights the column span and uh, it shows here that it is a three cell column span for this particular column. Uh, for second column, it's the same thing for the third column. Again, it's a column span of three cell. And for the fourth column, it's a column span of one cell. So like this, prep can automatically detect the column spans and associate the data with the header uh, columns. The next uh, complex use case for prep so prep is the only tool currently which has this capability. Uh, so what uh, prep uh, can do for STEM content when there is any mathematical content inside a document is you can draw over the mathematical formula, put it inside the paragraph it is part of, uh, change it to a formula tag, and uh, click on the alt text box and click on generate alt text. So this internally again uses our own math alt text APIs to generate alt text automatically inside PDF documents. So prep is the only tool currently which offers this feature to uh, and this speeds up the STEM remediation workflows by 10 times because the user doesn't uh, need to type out the entire alt text for mathematical formulas. Like this, you can remediate any kind of content uh, inside prep. Once the remediation is done, you can click on the save button and then click on the export. So once the user clicks on export, what happens is we automatically queue this request as an export uh, request and the user can switch to work on any other document. If the user wishes to see this doc the document immediately, they can click on the export PDF again and then open this uh, PDF in Adobe and just verify uh, the tags and all the content. So I'll just uh, quickly uh, turn on my screen reader and read this PDF document. So it will have some lists, some tables, uh, and the formula that we had uh, currently tagged, I'll try to read that using JAWS. Uh, any questions so far uh, on this? No, Siddharth. Prep demo document dash Adobe Acrobat Pro DC. Prep underline AHG demo underline V3 underline tag left control shift 5. Change reading enter. Prep underline AHG demo underline V3 on escape. Yeah, so now I'll start reading this document. Prep accessible PDF demo document heading level 1. Heading level 2 prep takes PDF remediation to the next level. Accessibility checker heading level 2. List of Canadian provinces by population left parent 2014 right parent heading level 2. List of 10 items. 1. Ontario. 2. Quebec. 3. British Columbia. 4. Alberta. 
So like this, you can read out the list content and navigate uh, in them. Now let me jump to the next list. List of three items. Bullet prep. Bullet my Athena. Bullet continual vision. So like this, you can read out any list content. Now let me go to the next list. List end. Nested list. List of three items. Bullet upload. Bullet auto dash detected. Bullet review the content list of three items nesting level one. So here it's a sub list. This is the nested list that I was talking about when I was remediating this. So prep automatically detects the nested level of content. And as you can uh, hear, the screen reader recognizes that and reads it as a sub list of the parent list. Oh, review the content. Oh, check for errors. Oh, fix the errors list of two items nesting level two. Black small square preview the document. Black small square export the document. So like this, uh, prep can remediate any kind of list. So now let me go to the table. So this is a slightly complex table. So I'll try to read that using Josh. Table with 11 columns and five rows. Column one, row one, salesperson. First quarter 2015, spans three columns. Column two. Second quarter 2015, spans three columns. Column three. Third quarter 2015, spans three columns. Column four. Annual total, column five. Total, row two. Third quarter 2015, SEP, column 10. So like this, you can navigate inside any complex table, uh, which has been remediated by print. Now let me- Use a build table stack. end. Simple table with colors, ruby, red, mid, rip, tape, math formulas. Find the slant asymptote of f left parent x right parent equals start fraction x squared minus 4x minus 5 over x minus 3 end fraction. So like this, you can even remediate uh, mathematical formulas inside uh, PDF documents, which are specifically very hard to tag manually. So yeah, so prep is kind of handling all variety of tags that typically people encounter while remediating. And it's able to do the same entire process of remediating very quickly and efficiently and make the tool uh, more accessible to people who, who are remediating these documents. Thank you. So this is what I had to cover uh, in my demo. Space, speech on demand. Yeah, you can let me. Thank you. Thank you, Siddharth. Uh, please feel free to ask any questions in the chat box, if there are any. Uh, next, we have uh, Laukek. Uh, he's the product owner for My Athena. Laukek, do you want to introduce yourself and take it forward? Uh, <clears throat> yes, thanks, Deepika. Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Laukek. I'm the product owner for My Athena, our digital learning platform. And I'll take through the demo. I'll introduce first uh, My Athena, as Moshmi mentioned, that it's a digital platform which has access to not just internal courses, which has been built by the organizations, but also the external courses, which are available on Coursera, Udemy. So it's a one uh, stop shop for all the courses so that employees don't have to go into any external platform. They can just go to My Athena and can browse through. Second is uh, it has skill profile for the entire organization. So it helps to understand which particular team in the organization has what type of skills or the entire organization has what are uh, the skills with the proficiency, or what type of skills with what type of proficiency. So that helps understand the structure of an entire organization. Third is, you now we have AI enabled personalized learning path for employees. So if employees are interested in particular skill sets, uh, digital marketing, communications, Python, so, uh, we're using machine learning algorithms. We generate, uh, we curate paths for them. And uh, those are also available on My Athena. Uh, also, My Athena is quick and easy to integrate. So within less than 72 hours, we can onboard the entire organization to My Athena. So it does not take much time. And last is that it, it does, do not have any ex expensive upfront course licensing fees. Just like if, if we go with any other course provider, say Coursera or Aura, we have to pay uh, the subscription fees. But with My Athena, they do no upfront licensing fees. I'll quickly share my screen and go through the platform. <clears throat> yeah. On the screen, uh, the first thing we have is uh, the sign in button. Now as uh, on the organization, we can sign in through organization email IDs. 
So we don't have to remember any external passwords. They can just click. Uh, we can integrate with single sign-ons and they can use the same usernames and passwords for their organization. They can click, they can sign in with their organization email IDs. Once the sign-in happens on the screen, uh, uh, it will land on the dashboard page. That dashboard has all the entities uh, which employee needs to understand total number of courses they have viewed so far, total number of courses they have requested to their managers for the approvals so far, course, total number of courses they have has been approved and course total number of courses which has been completed. Below the dashboard, we have a search button. So as I click on the search button, uh, I can search through uh, more than 80,000 courses from my Athena database and which can help an employee to make an informed decision. Along with the search, on the search page, we also have uh, the recommendations done by my Athena. Now this recommendation uh, using an algorithm, uh, we capture uh, the information uh, such as uh, learning goals, skill sets of an employee, and we run some algorithm and that creates a learning path for employees. So that is available here on the search page itself. Along with the recommendation, what we have is most popular courses. This is very important as in the entire organization also, people might be searching or employees might be searching for different courses. They, uh, they might have taken some courses, they might have completed some courses. So we, we do the complete analysis of the engagement and show it here. So on the search page, we can search, we can see the My Athena recommendations based on employees profile, which is skill sets and learning goals. And we have most popular courses which is uh, the engagement for the entire organization. Now on the search page, I will search for a particular course. So I am interested in learning Python. So I will type Python and I will enter search. As soon as I do that, what I will see is I will see the results of Python from different platforms. So on the screen, I will see on the left hand side, I will have the provider filters, which will have uh, providers from different um, uh, arenas, such as Coursera, Zetureka, Educative, Udemy, Datacamp. And on the right hand side, we'll have all the courses information. And I can choose whichever courses I want to go with. And I can make a decision. I can ask uh, for an approval also. Along with asking for an approval from the same page, if I want to recommend, I like a course and I want to recommend to my peers or to my subordinates, I can do that from the same screen as well. Now, if I'm interested in a course, I will just click on the course and I will see all the details on the next tab. Along with searches of courses, in case if I'm interested to just see the articles, I can also, there is a tab available uh, next to courses which says articles, I can click on that. So the same keyword, which I'm searching for Python. Now we will have all the articles from the web and it will generate and it will curate a list and it will be available for anyone to read. So in case I, if I do not want to go with courses alone, I can also choose to go with articles. I can read articles also. If I want to see for the same search results keyword Python, if I want to see that uh, what Google produces results web pages, I can also click that inside my Athena so that I don't have to leave the platform and I can see the results as well. Along with courses, articles, and Google results. If I'm interested to see videos as well uh, for the same Python key results, I can click on videos. It will show me the videos also. So uh, that means that on the search page, uh, not just we can search for all the courses, we can also search for articles around the web. We can also search for uh, all the Google results we can also search for videos. Now I'm back to courses on the search page. And if, if I want to do a particular course and if there is a budget involved in the company, I can just click, uh, I can ask request for an approval. There will be a button. I can click on that and I can enter the amount and I can take a reason that I want to learn this skill and I, want, I can confirm this. That manager will receive an email and manager will approve the courses. As soon as manager approves the courses for, for an employee under search, I will see a button which says my courses. I will click on my courses and that courses after approved will be available under in progress section, which means now the course has been started 
I can go it in the respective course provider site. Say I liked a course from Coursera and it has been approved by my manager. Now I can go to Coursera, I can buy this course. And once that course is completed on Coursera, I can come back to my Athena and I can just mark this course complete. As soon as I mark this course complete, I can upload certificate, I can upload receipt. If there are any other documents I can upload, I can enter the amount I've paid, I can do ratings, reviews, and I submit. Once I do that, manager gets the email. And if there is a reimbursement process, the email also gets to the finance team and they can process the reimbursement. Along with the entire complete flow, which covers the courses, there is a button which is available, which says my learning path. And if I click on that, courses which has been recommended by my Athena based on the algorithm will be available here. My learning paths will be available here so that if I don't want to search, I can come to my learning path and I can go through the entire list of courses. Along with my Athena recommendation, if my manager, my reporting managers have recommended the courses to me, that will be available in the same tab, which is my learning path. If my uh, associates have recommended a course to me, that will be available under the same path. And uh, lastly, there will be a button which will say content and I will click on that. And all the internal courses, which has been built inside the organization uh, will be available there. So if I click there, all the internal courses, which has been built by say my managers, my subordinates from different locations will be available here, and I can take those courses and I can start the uh, internal courses as well. And uh, apart from courses, now, if there are certain trainings which has to be done, um, including say onboarding trainings uh, or maybe sexual harassment trainings or any other type of trainings, that is possible. So I can create a training inside my Athena. I can assign those trainings to particular teams, particular individuals or the entire organization. And those trainings will be available to an employee under my courses as well with a set due date. So I can also say that this training has to be completed uh, in say in next by next week. And that trainings will be available for employees. They can start the training and they have to complete. So overall, this platform will not just have the courses which are available externally. It will also have courses which are available internally, uh, trainings and learning paths. Thank you. Let me know if you have any questions. Laukik, we have one question. Is my Athena customized as per the organization's needs, especially for an NGO? Uh, absolutely, yes. Uh, uh, hi, Vikas here. Uh, uh, quick question. So why I ask that is because, uh, so you said we can use this as a LND uh, tool as well, right? Correct. Yeah. So so we can this this uh, the courses here are generic as well as uh, we can include generic courses as well. That is correct. Yes, we can include so, generic courses as well as well as we can include particular courses based on skill sets also. Okay, and uh, so the the library would have. Uh, uh, free courses as well, right? Yes, that is correct. And on the filters, we also have provided free button. So okay. in case if we just want to see the free courses, we can have that enabled and then it will only show the free courses. Okay. okay. So this can be used uh, for a development plan if you're preparing for some employee in the organization, right? Yes. Okay, okay. And is there any limitation for the free courses, number of free courses or anything like that? Uh, no limitation. So if, uh, as, as far as they are available on the web, uh, we can provide it, yes. Okay. So the libraries are integrated uh, inside the uh, tool to... Uh, yes, to, to make it available, yes. Okay, okay. And, and I, I mean, I saw that there are different platforms like Udemy, Coursera and all. So I just wanted to, I was just curious to know what is the benefit of going through my Athena uh, to those courses? It, it is just that we are comparing all of them and then going that, is this, 
I mean, is that is that the benefit we are looking here because you can see all the courses related to that particular topic? Is that the benefit you're saying? So the main advantage of going with my Athena is that we are not tied up to a particular course provider. Now, say mm -hmm. if an organization uh, okay. wants to go with Udemy, mm -hmm. in case if an employee is interested to do with Coursera or if an employee has to do per certain courses from LinkedIn, mm -hmm. then employee won't be able to do that because they, they are tied, out, tied down to Udemy. Mm -hmm. So with us, employee has the power to make a decision that whether which courses they would like to take and they can make a choice. And this in turn helps organizations to save a lot of money so that they don't have to pay licensing fees, just like in Udemy's case, they have to. Rather than mm -hmm. with my Athena, uh, employee can make a choice. And, and once they like the course, they ask managers for an approval and manager approves. And then manager is also aware that which courses uh, my employees do. Okay. Does, does the course fee also differ in this platform to that platform? Um, generally, we try to make it as accurate as, as, as we can. Uh, but sometimes it may happen. It may go off with, um, uh, you know, certain, certain, certain money. But I think, I think it's not major difference. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, we have one more question, Laukik. Uh, do you have plans to expand support for books in native Indian languages, Tamil, Malayalam? Um, this is a uh, very, uh, this is specific to my Athena. Uh, yes. Yes. Okay. Um, so I would just like to understand this question. So when we say, uh, expand support for books in native Indian languages, I think, so do we want to have the list of books as well? Like we search for courses, articles, web pages, and videos. Like we can also have an option to search for books for this particular keyword, which we are looking for like that. I think that's, that's what, but. Okay. 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 I think uh, we can, we can think on that and we can also uh, discuss further, but that's a, that's a very good suggestion. Okay. To have uh, list of books. Definitely, we can think on that. Uh, Lokik uh, Vikas here again. I would like to know more about the commercial part of this. If you want to subscribe for uh, this thing. We can take that uh, offline, Vikas. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Uh, any further questions on uh, continual vision prep or myathena? Feel free to write to us at contact at continualengine.com if, uh, if there are any questions later on also. I think yes, Vikas, uh, there are no more questions. Okay, uh, so uh, are we done with uh, all the presentation part? Uh, yes, yes. Okay, um, yeah, I think, uh, yeah, thank you so much to the uh, continual uh, engine team of uh, Deepika, Mausmi, Rajat, uh, Lokik, and uh, Siddharth, uh, all who presented today. Um, thank you so much, uh, and I also thank all the participants who are present here. Uh, sorry, I'm not able to see the names. Uh, there are a lot of names you'd like to thank. Uh, I, I saw Raj, Mr. Raj had pinged earlier. Uh, and uh, I'm not sure if uh, we have Sunish sir, Mr. Sunish uh, in the call. Uh, uh, thank you everyone uh, for joining this uh, session, uh, this uh, product expo. Uh, from Samathanam, from Mahantesar's, uh, on Mahantesar's behalf, I would like to thank everyone uh, for this uh, uh, session. And uh, it was an informative session. I hope, uh, uh, especially for me, my Athena was more uh, interesting because uh, 
I am part of the HR department here in Samarthanam. So I would I was looking for uh, I mean I, we are always in lookout for something related to training and learning and development uh, tools or softwares or system. So that was interesting. Uh, yes, um, uh, Victor sir, you're still there with us. Yeah. Uh, so. Uh, yeah, Deepika, uh, I would like to, I mean. Yeah, um, so we would and, also, yeah. Uh, we would also like to take this opportunity to thank uh, Samarthanam for this initiative and uh, thank you all attendees for joining in. Thank you for your time and uh, Vikas, especially thank you for all the help in putting together this webinar. Thank you so much, Deepika. Uh, same here with uh, you as well as uh, Sriram sir. I would like to convey my thanks to Sriram sir for all the support and uh, uh, you know scheduling this uh, session thank you so much everyone thank you all right thank you everyone have a good uh, morning or night wherever you are in the world <laughs>